There's finally a company that is listening to us and giving us what we want. This is the Fossi Audio ZA3, and they've added things that we've asked for. Things like balanced inputs, variable subwoofer out, the ability to go mono or stereo with the amplifier. I mean, you name it, they've probably added it to this mini amplifier, even replaceable op amps. But that's not to say that it's perfect or without its faults because there definitely are some with the Fosse ZA3. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Looks don't necessarily tell you how something's gonna perform, but it sure does make an impact. And that's exactly what the Fosse Audio does when you first open it up. I love on the side where they have milled out this solid piece of aluminum, this middle body solid piece of aluminum, and they milled it out and put this orange inlay back behind there that acts as ventilation, as well as an aesthetically pleasing design. On the front of it, we take a look at it and it does have your orange volume control. And if you push that in, that's how you turn it on and off. It also has two toggle switches along with a little LED light. Now the toggle switch on the left hand side when looking at it is for your RCA and XLR. And this is where I'm really impressed and happy with what they've done. When we take a look on the back, you're gonna see that you have both RCA inputs and you also have a TRS and an XLR connector. Now that's for your balanced input. So if you're running a really nice preamp that has balanced outputs on it, you're gonna to wanna to use these balanced inputs. It has the ability to cut down on your interference and give you a better sound. I love the fact that they give you the ability to add either TRS or XLR. Now, if we continue back on the front, on the right hand side, it does have a switch here that goes to mono and stereo. And that's pretty amazing because this thing comes with a 48 volt, five amp power supply. The chip in it's the Texas Instruments 3255, which gives you a lot of power. And when I say a lot of power, at four ohms, this thing is capable of 240 watts output RMS out your mono input. That's at 1% distortion. Now, if we swap this down to stereo, it goes to 185 watts. This has plenty of power to drive even those less sensitive speakers. And that's one of the things that really has impressed me. The first complaint that some people are going to have is this switch right here on the front. A lot of times with these amplifiers that have a switch to go between mono and stereo, this is either on the back or somewhere that's hard to get to so that you don't accidentally flip or activate mono and stereo. So if you were changing your volume, say, and accidentally hit the switch and flipped it to mono and you were turning it up real loud, you could potentially damage your speakers. However, I'm not really that concerned about this because that's not how I'm gonna utilize it. And I think a lot of people are gonna probably utilize it more like I am. And they're gonna be hooking up a nice preamp to it ahead of time and then running your XLR to it. And this will be more of a set it and forget it. I love the idea of a 2.1 amplifier. This does have a subwoofer out. One of the problems that I've been having with a lot of these mini amps is that it does have a subwoofer out, but it's not variable. Meaning that if I turn this volume knob up, the subwoofer stays stagnant and I have to go over to the subwoofer and turn that volume up as well. That's no bueno, especially when I want to just listen to my music and enjoy it. Thankfully, Fosse has done a really great job and implemented this as a variable output, meaning that when I turn this volume up on the front, it also changes the volume of the subwoofer accordingly. And that is extremely important to me. Now this is a passive output, meaning that you do have to have an amplifier on your subwoofer. When we take a look at the back of the input, we do see that your speaker connector for your mono is your right output. So when you're plugging up as a mono system, you're gonna to wanna to use your right input on both amplifiers, whether that be RCA or whether that be your XLR or TRS balanced input. They did a great job spacing these out. They used smaller binding posts, but they're spaced out wide enough that you should be able to fit pretty much any type of banana plug in there. At least most banana plugs will fit in here perfectly. They also added a 12 volt trigger in for your system integration. I think that's great. Where I think that they missed is that they didn't put a 12 volt trigger out. It would have been really nice to see a 12 volt trigger out that would go ahead and hook up to another one of these so that if we were running this as dual monos, we could trigger that to turn on. Now because Fosse put everything in here, including the XLR inputs, which do add space, this is a little bit bigger than 
your typical mini amplifier. In fact, this is on the relatively large side because of that. It's still really small and compact and can easily fit on a desktop if you wanted it to, but just keep in mind it will be a little bit bigger. Now, if you were to open this up, this does have some op amps in it, and these op amps can be replaced if you want to, so you can fine tune it to the sound that you appreciate and love. Now, you're probably wondering how this actually sounds. This has a very neutral sound on it, and a lot of amplifiers, mini amplifiers, you can tell that either the bass rolls off too soon or sometimes the high end rolls off too soon. I did not feel like this rolled off at all with either the high end or the low end. And everything I listened to just sounded really, really good. It was just a very neutral sounding amplifier. And the great thing about this too is you can use this in just about any room that you want to, depending on the speakers that you're hooking up with, because it really does have a significant amount of power. And that 185 watts should be good for most speakers in a medium sized room. And even if you're running like high efficiency speakers, you could use it in a large room. One of the places where I haven't heard anyone discuss this yet, but where I think it would be kind of interesting to use is to use this actually as a surround sound amplifier for those of you who have pre-outs that want to power a couple other speakers for like your Atmos system. So if you have, say, uh, an amplifier that, has, that can power everything except your last two Atmos speakers, this might be a cool way to power that. But I think what most people are going to be using this for is by stacking these either as mono or using these as stereo, a stereo setup with a preamp. Now, I'm actually using this SMSL preamp, and that's what I used in all of my tests when I was listening to it. And that has the benefit of being able to change the tonality if I want to as well, although I didn't. I listened to it just the way it was, and that's really the way that I preferred this particular amplifier. If you have anything you want to comment on, throw it down in the comments section. I'll make sure to check on those. I'll try to get back to you with any questions that you might have. Otherwise guys, if this is your first time visiting, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out tremendously. I'm really trying to hit 100,000 subscribers this year, so help me out if you can. All right guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio. I'm out.